Yo, guys. Uh, welcome to the next episode of Inner Circle with my boys Alec. Hey. And AJ. What's up? Yeah, sorry, Ben can't be here. He's usually the guy who's in all of these, but uh, he's got some important work to be done. So uh, today we're going to be we're covering the classic, the classic zombie movie, uh, 28 Days Later, directed mm -hmm. by the great Danny Boyle. Who, uh, you might know him from such works as, I think he did Slumdog Millionaire and uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, train Spotting. T2 Train Spotting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I think that was the sequel. Train Spotting was the original. <laughs> oh, well, my bad. I, I haven't seen either of them, but I know of them purely because Ewan McGregor is in it. Yeah, I haven't seen either of them either. <laughs> Me neither. But, yeah. I, 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 I want to, I just have never gotten the chance. But anyway, this isn't about those movies. This is about 28 Days Later. So, first off, uh, I want to know, uh, like, general first impressions, what you guys thought of, of, of the movie. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I um, I liked how uh, I liked how uh, kind of um, intense and in what it was in certain scenes, like during the action scenes, where it, you know they had like the intense zoom ins and shaky camera work when the yeah. zombies were coming after them and all that. I thought that was a really cool um, you know art style choice. And yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I have like heard about this movie for years and years uh, my older brother is like a big fan he saw it like day one but i just never got around to watching them until recently last week was my first time watching it and honestly i've got to say i'm kind of kicking myself for not watching it sooner because it's pretty phenomenal yeah with yeah. uh with all the coronavirus craziness going on right now like this movie really hits different <laughs> it does yeah <laughs> yeah and sort of going off of what you said earlier, um, Alec, uh, about the camera work, yeah, it, it really reminds me of this other film that I saw that is also a, a British horror film. Uh, it's called Dog Soldiers. Apparently this is like a really popular style of filmmaking in British horror. Like it's really fast paced, the camera's really shaky and really like there's a lot of Dutch angles. That's really in your face. Uh, some people like that, others don't. I think it works depending on what kind of story you're trying to tell, and I think this is like the perfect story for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For me, this whole style just you know, it really it really clicked with me. Because um, one thing I want to point out before we get into like the full discussion is that uh, like at the beginning of the movie, did you guys notice like or did you guys like care that like like the way it looked, not like cinematography, but like uh, like the filter they put on it to make it look like grainy digital video and like. That's kind of something they did throughout the entire movie. And it really kind of threw me for a loop at first because I wasn't expecting it. I didn't think the movie looked like that. And at first I thought it was because uh, Hulu was being a dick or something and just being really low res. And I was like, no, wait, this is happening throughout the entire film. And at first oh. I was like, well, that's kind of weird. But yeah, then, I thought I thought it was just because, you know, the movie was made in 2002 and that's just how the quality looked back when it was made. No, but... no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think... So apparently, I, had, I did some research, and apparently, most of the film was shot like that sequence was shot on film, like it, like uh, normal films were shot back in two thousand two or whenever. There were scenes like uh, when uh, the main character Jim is uh, in London, like he walks out of the coma, you know, in the hospital, and it's everything's empty, and you know, he got like Piccadilly Circus, and I don't I actually don't know if they show that, but, like uh, London Bridge and like Parliament and all that, and it's just completely mm -hmm. devoid of anybody. Uh, that sequence was actually shot on uh, like DV cameras, you know, like those early digital cameras that used the tape. Uh, yeah. I think it was because they had to be really quick when they shot those scenes because uh, they had to block off like, you know, in London's a, it's a huge city, obviously. So they had to block off these sections. They can only block them off for like 20, 30 minutes at a time. So they had to use these really light portable cameras, you know, like the digital cameras. Just, yeah, I was wondering how they got just yeah. like the entire streets just cleared off, especially around that area, which is heavily populated and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for those scenes. Yeah, it's like at first it's I wasn't be quite, hard. Yeah, it's like at first I wasn't quite sure why they did that. And I just research and I was like, oh, it, 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 it made sense. And it kind of I feel like uh, after watching it a second time, I just watched it a couple uh, a couple hours ago after watching it a second time. I I find like that little filter they put over it. 
it, it, it annoyed me at first, but it, it really grew on me the second time I watched it. And I really couldn't imagine the film being any other way. Mm-hmm. Kind of, it, it kind of gives it this weird quality of being almost like a found footage film. It's kind of, like, you know, like someone else was there, you know, they were filming it. And it's kind of like you're, it, it puts you closer to, uh, to the action, I guess. Yeah. And um, then if it, then if all of it were shot in film and, it, you know, it, it makes the, the, like the final part of the film, you know, spoiler alert, you know, everybody, uh, you know, Hannah and Jim and uh, Selena, they're all in the, uh, the cottage in the Scottish Highlands or in Northern England, I think, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that part was all shot on film. You know, it just makes it have that much more punch where it's like, you know, like you can just breathe a sigh of relief. Like they're finally out of it. You know, everything's finally going to be, you know, more or less okay. Yeah. So can you guys, uh, either of you guys, go into detail about exactly like what, like what specific parts of the film you guys liked and what parts that you, well, actually, yeah, let's just start off with what parts you'd like. We'll get to the negatives later on, but mm-hmm. now let's just focus on the positives, like any specific positives that you guys know. Well, um, probably like the biggest f- surprise for me uh, and like a big positive, uh, in my opinion, is uh, Cillian Murphy being cast as like the main character in this film. Yeah. Um, I had yeah. no idea he was in this and I've been like a huge fan of his ever since I saw him as the Scarecrow in Batman Begins. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I was just like totally blown away by his performance. It's like so visceral and real. And uh, I, I kind of was like laughing to myself as I was watching the beginning of this movie because like it's so eerily similar to the first few episodes of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I definitely got those vibes too. Yeah. Yeah. And I just I was just like, wow, so that's where they got this idea from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this you can definitely is... tell where they ripped it from. <laughs> yeah, like this this movie has influenced so many other zombie films and I'm just like I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Cillian Murphy I didn't really realize how much of a great actor he was. I mean, he's great as, you know, Scarecrow in Batman Begins, and um, I think he's in... He's in Inception as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in a lot of uh, Nolan movies, or at least at, at least those two I know of. Dunkirk, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he is in Dunkirk. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's just, like, the type of actor... He does, like, a really good job, but he's not, like, an A-list star, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's... he. But this movie kind of taught me, he's like, okay, he, he is a terrific actor like it would have so like it, it um it would have been so easy in this movie for it to devolve into like melodrama and you know him to be over exaggerated and like oh, it's a zombie apocalypse guys we gotta run but <laughs> and there are parts obviously where he gets really intense but i mean it's called for and it feels real it feels like he's playing a real person and not a caricature and his character isn't boring it's it's a really good performance and i think this was like his first uh like his first big performance. Cause I think before this, he was in a bunch of indie movies. And I think that's what Danny Boyle wanted was he wanted to cast an unknown so that his role was more believable. And I think that really comes through in the film. Yeah, for sure. No, he definitely did a great job. You know? Yeah, so uh, Alec, uh, is there anything like specifically positive about this film that you love that you want to say? I really, I really like the uh, the uh, direction they went with the camera work. I kind of touched on this earlier, how you know most of the action scene the scenes are shot like more intensely than you know w- when there's not any action. At first, you know, at first when I was watching it, it was a little hard for me to catch up because you know most of the time it was like zoomed in and with Dutch angles and whatnot. But 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 over the course of the film, I got used to it and started to understand kind of what was going on with with what the uh, undead were capable of doing and. Uh, how how they like how they like recorded it, it it looked like they they record when they were doing like the scenes for the people when um they were infected by this rage virus it it looked like they were like uh recording their movements and then kind of speeding them up for the film yeah yeah when when they're like j- jittering around and stuff i thought that was a pretty good idea to, to kind of show that how it really affect them and whatnot and yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. All that stuff, it made it feel, <laughs> we're going to bring this word up a lot. Cause it's, this is the word that I think of when I think of this film now was visceral. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a really good word to, de- uh, to, to describe it. Cause the plot and the characters and, um, especially like, you know, like the cinematography and the editing in certain points, it's very, you know, it's, it, it's very visceral. It's very in your face. Um, oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that this film, some people have described this film, like when it came out as 
the scariest movie since The Exorcist. And I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> I don't think it's scary per se. There are it some. Can, yeah, it can be at some points. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some very like disturbing parts, you know, like uh, in the end. Although it's kind of cathartic as well when um, when Jim is gouging out uh, Mitchell, like that soldier, his eyes, he was on the ground, he's just like struggling. Like that was, that that got me. I was like, holy, holy crap, dude. Um, that's Yeah, that's definitely a bro moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this movie doesn't hold back at all. But I mean, that's, that's it goes for it. And I think it's, it succeeds. Definitely. Um, also, I, w- I wanted to, as a guy who loves to edit stuff, I don't want to call myself an editor or anything, but mm-hmm. I, I loved the editing in this movie. I think it's paced almost perfectly. Like, there's really no points where it drags. Like, it, it obviously doesn't, you know, it's not fast-paced throughout the whole entire thing, but of course, no movie really is. Yeah. And the movie uh, perfectly kind of balances um, more slow-paced, you know, character-driven scenes that kind of are supposed to make you care about the characters and they do a really good job of that and that's also mostly thanks to Danny Boyle's fantastic direction you know kind of giving these characters believable personalities and uh, really good dialogue as well although he didn't write it I think it was written by Alex Garland but uh yeah fantastic writing as well gotta touch on that mm-hmm. yeah but yeah but the editing um it uh it, it, it balances like the slow moving parts with those really you know heart pumping fast moving parts and it makes you know the fast moving parts have much more impact which kind of seems like a no-brainer, like, oh, of, of course, you know, that's what good action movies do. But I think this one, this one goes above and beyond what most action movies do. And especially since most zombie movies are, uh, if, if I may say, you know, complete shite, you know, they're pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> especially all, all the movies that tried to ape this movie and um, a lot of the movies that came out after, uh, you know, the original Night of the Living Dead by uh, George A. Romero, and like the 70s and like all those knockoffs and unoriginal pieces of garbage. It's like this movie kind of stands above almost all of them. You know, I don't know if I want to say it's better than the Romero films because I've never seen them. I really want to. But as far as like zombie movies and most action and like horror type films I've seen, this is definitely one of the best. Like it really, especially on a second watch, I was like, okay, this film is one of my favorites now. Like it is, it, it is fantastic. But, uh, Enough talking good about this movie. Enough, you know, it, enough sucking it off. It's time <laughs> to do. It's time to. It's time to talk. Uh, talk crap about it. Uh, if, if if there's really anything, which of course no movie's perfect, and I do have um, a little bit of a gripe with it. Uh, I don't really want to get into it right now because I gotta think more about it. But mm-hmm. if I put you guys on the spot real fast, if there's anything like negative that you guys can bring up about it either of you it, it doesn't really matter who talks first this is going to be really hard for me i i really had a hard time finding anything wrong with this movie mm-hmm. um or at least anything that i thought was wrong yeah uh god i guess i've got some if you don't <laughs> yeah you go ahead i'm gonna collate my thoughts real quick yeah yeah, yeah. cool but, hey, alex seems like he was or yeah alex seems like he was more um more on the fence or like more in the middle about it whereas you know me and aj are a lot more gung-ho about it <laughs> i'd have to say uh one of the biggest issues for me was the pacing i, I felt like at certain points the uh film kind of dragged on especially like during the scenes where everyone's kind of just calmed down and uh not not really getting into any intense scenes with the zombies. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I I say that I feel like there are certain things that could have been cut out, but at the same time, there are a lot of things that are kind of integral to the story and the characters that would you know would rather be left in. Yeah, yeah. So did you just not like, or did you like not really care much about the characters? Is, is, is that why you didn't enjoy the slow parts, or is it just because you just you know thought they were boring or something? I mean, I did care about like um, Cillian Murphy and uh, Naomi Harris, the, their characters. Um, I did kind of care for the father and daughter, but not not as much as the, the main cast. It's not, but it's not necessarily the cast. It's just, it's just kind of like them just kind of doing things that wouldn't really be necessary for the story. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say. <laughs> no, 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 I get you. I, I get you. Cause I mean, like you know, like the character moments are usually in you know like uh, downtimes, you know, when there's not a lot of action going on and it's just like, you know, I guess they just didn't want to have the movie be in London and then they just appear in Manchester, you know, like they, 
it would have made sense for them to stop somewhere because they said it would take like two or three days. And I guess that's that's obviously why they did it. And I, I love that scene personally, except mm -hmm. one cheesy thing I thought I didn't really like about that. Uh, and, and I think, are you talking about the scene um, where they're at the uh, the old abandoned church, the Abbey place? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when they're in the field having that picnic, yeah. Yeah, it's probably like the biggest part where the movie kind of slows down. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I liked it generally, but I didn't like that one nightmare that he had you know, because it just seemed kind of pointless to me. Then it has that weird effect where it's just like he gets up and then, you know, like they edit it to where he also gets up again. And it's like kind of like that. You have that distorted sound effect. And I felt like that was kind of cheesy. They didn't really need to do that. Yeah. When he woke up and no one was there, I was like, you you, you obviously knew that, that it was a dream. You could see it coming from a mile away. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, yeah. I mean, with that being said, it's a very short, you know, thing. So it's not it's not like it drags on forever and it doesn't. Yeah. And that's why. I actually didn't even like remember it all that much until you started talking about, I mean, you didn't start talking about it, but about like something that related to it. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that's the only, really the only real gripe I have with the movie that it, it was a little too, a little too long and a little too slow paced in some parts for my liking, but yeah, you felt like it could have used a bit more zombie action in the middle, you know, I guess. Yeah. And I'll, I guess also a bit, just a bit more characterization. Okay. Yeah. Somewhat. So. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. I did feel like um the dad. Like I think also. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I feel like the dad and the daughter could have definitely used a bit more characterization because mm -hmm. you kind of you're introduced uh, you're introduced to, to them about like twenty five percent of the way through the film or something like that. Uh, I mean they're good characters and I like them. I I, I grew to like them in a pretty short amount of time because. I don't know. They just seemed like genuinely good people. They were well written. They don't stand out a whole lot compared to, uh, you know, Cillian Murphy and uh, Naomi Harris. Yeah. And I definitely, I definitely see where you're coming from with that. And I definitely feel like, um, especially with the character of uh, Hannah, I felt like her acting was kind of not the best. And I think that's probably just because she was, you know, the youngest member of the cast. But I felt like maybe, you know, her performance could have had a bit more like believability to it. Because I don't know, like she. Just, yeah, I felt that way too. Yeah. Yeah, her performance seems kind of wooden at points. It's not bad. It doesn't detract too much. But there were some points where I was like, I wish she would have given a bit more emotion, you know. But I, I, I guess that's a, a bit of a nitpick in the overall scheme of things. Because I still think she's a pretty good character and she does some some pretty cool things. And overall, I, I you know, I definitely liked her character. I don't think it was it's it's not too bad it's just something where it's like if they were to remake the film or something or if they if we could go back in time and change it that's what i would that's what i would fix mm -hmm. but you know with the dad i don't really mind that they didn't give him all that much characterization i suppose compared to the daughter just because you know he dies pretty early on which yeah. is super tragic i know his death is really really shocking i mean i didn't expect him to you know get infected and everything but as soon as you know it has that shot of the blood. I love that shot of the blood coming towards his face. And it's just like, yeah, that was a good shot. And like, I, I kind of saw it coming when he like walked away from the group and was just kind of sulking about trying to find out where everyone was. I was like, yeah, he's gonna, <laughs> something's gonna happen here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like universal movie language where it's like, okay, if, if there's a group and one of them leaves, mm -hmm. that person is automatically gonna die. If this is a horror film, they're gonna die. That's just, that's just, yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, now that we've kind of molded over, I would say that, yeah, my one of my biggest negatives is probably the, the girl, the, the little girl. Her performance does feel kind of wooden at times. Um, she does things that don't necessarily make sense to me. Like she takes, spoiler alert, she takes like half of a Valium and like a day later she starts feeling symptoms and she just starts like to not react to anything around her. And that just- Wait, hang on. Wait, was that? Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, but I think... I, I think she... Didn't she take another one when they were imprisoned in the soldier base? She might have. I, yeah, I probably okay. missed that. Yeah, I was wondering about that at first, because she started saying, like, I think the pills are working. And I was like, but you didn't take any pills. And then I saw it again. It's a really... It's very quickly cut, which is why I didn't notice it the first time. It's, like, super subtle. Yeah, yeah. I think she like quickly pops them in her mouth and, and uh, eats them or uh, swallows them before like the soldier guy can come and break them up. So that's what I figured because I think she took like two or three or whatever, however many it was. But she did take them. So then that part made a whole lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, other than that, I thought like overall it was pretty clunky. And then I kind of I kind of wish this is just like personal preference, but I kind of wish that we got some more insight 
on each of the soldiers' backgrounds. Like we kind of get some insight with mm -hmm. the one guy that that gets thrown in the uh, the jail with Cillian Murphy. Mm -hmm. And I would I really would have liked to explore sort of the psyche of each individual, especially like the the one that gets his eyes gouged out. Like he yeah, yeah. he seems like he's got a lot of issues. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I feel I feel like you know the the. The soldiers in general, like how you know they they wanted to just capture the girls just to you know breed with them. I, f I felt like that was a little unrealistic for you, you know how they would have acted, but I don't I, know. I can kind of believe it. People are can be real pieces of garbage, and when you have like nine horny dudes all stuck inside of a house, you know they're getting stir crazy. I wouldn't put it past them. Apocalyptic condition. It's it's something that's horrific, and you would never think that people would do something like that, but. I mean, this is, you know, apocalypse times, you know, anything can really happen or almost anything, but um, anything, anything goes. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I was just thinking about this. Uh, I would really love like a movie that takes place entirely like within that mansion. And it's just like, like the survivors, they come to the mansion and then you have the army and it's like the two sides pitted against each other and they like slowly go crazy and like get paranoid. Uh, against each other that that i think that'd be a really cool idea for a, a movie like a zombie apocalypse movie that would that would be a good idea yeah i was thinking about something like that where you know the, they're just kind of in an enclosed space for most of the film and if they ever do another sequel to this series that i think that needs to be the plot yeah because like the more i'm thinking about it the more i'm like that could really work kind of like a resident evil type of situation except mm -hmm. the zombies aren't so much the enemies as it's just each other and i think that's i mean the idea itself is probably, uh, it's definitely been done before, but I don't know if it's been done exactly like that. And because that was probably uh, my, at least my second favorite part of the film was just the whole part at the mansion. I really wanted to see like, I really loved like the way it looks on the inside, the way they shot it. I really wanted to know more about like, you know, e each of the soldiers, I felt like for the most part, they were kind of just, you know, caricatures. They weren't, they felt two dimensional. They still felt like people, but maybe a little bit too, evil i guess um especially since most of the other like most of the other parts of the movie everybody else is very three-dimensional they feel like real people and it's kind of a weird kind of uh, uh contrast when they go to the mansion and everybody's just kind of you know like the soldiers are just horny and mean and which i mean i guess is kind of believable i did not believe for a second that jim you know scrawny jim mm -hmm. who hasn't eaten anything but sugar for the past weeks could take out all of those soldiers and save those girls. I didn't, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I wanted to root for him, but realistically, like... Well, I mean, he only kills, like, two of them. Yeah. He killed Jones by stabbing him, but he surprised him, so he didn't, like, overpower him. He, he, I mean, I, I believed it because, like, it felt like he was going the stealthy route. Yeah. And yeah. you're right, he did only kill, like, two people. So I, I I didn't really it didn't really bother me, but I can see how being that low on nutrients could be an issue. <laughs> yeah, and also like you know you got to take the backgrounds into the into consideration. Like these are su supposedly highly trained soldiers, and he w was like what like a biker boy, <laughs> you know so, like yeah he was a bike courier. <laughs> I mean the apocalypse changes you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I could just chalk it up to he's been changed a lot over the course of like the movie. He's become a new person essentially, mm -hmm. even though I wish they would have explored that more, you know, because it, it feels like it kind of comes kind of sort of out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, he, yeah, yeah, but he hasn't had much fighting experience against, like, other people other than the Yeah, infected. well, I mean, he's, it's not like he's using, like, Kung Fu or anything, like, 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 a. Well, yeah, I know. He just brute forces, though, he just surprises him. It was just a surprise attack, I feel like. He just used stealth and surprise to his advantage. Because, I mean, yeah. I think he was just running on a lot of adrenaline, and adrenaline makes you do things that you couldn't normally do. It just makes you, like, super strong and alert and stuff. So I feel like you can just chalk it up to that. That's that's kind of, like, subconsciously, that's what I thought about. But, yeah, definitely, it's kind of funny to think about <laughs> little scrawny Jimbo here just kind of running around <laughs> the mansion <laughs> killing everybody. That'd be... I, I, I'd like to watch that. That'd be kind of... That'd be funny. Yeah, I thought it was, like, a, a really cool, just, like, image in general of just, like, this really scrawny like savage looking dude just like running around amidst the uh, the zombie apocalypse i felt like it, it just like the whole visual uh signature of it i guess you could say really fit the tone of the movie overall i mean i i thought it was kind of badass i'm not gonna lie especially like all those shots of him like running on the, like the rooftop and stuff and like it's raining and oh man it looks so good it definitely was cool you know but i you know i try to look at like 
you know, a more realistic standpoint when it comes to like these kind of movies. Yeah, I get that. I'm kind of glad it's not like all three of us were just like, oh, dude, yeah, this movie's so awesome. Oh my God. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of glad we have one more, you know, nuanced opinion. I mean, I feel like all of our opinions are nuanced up to a certain point, you know, but I mean, yeah. I, I can't hide my, uh, my love for this movie. You know, it's just, it, it's just kind of one of those movies that kind of just struck me and I haven't really completely stopped thinking about it, especially since I just watched it. This is definitely, yeah. this is definitely, yeah. <laughs> Uh, gonna go on my list of favorite films at some point yeah yeah i definitely love it too i you know it's just hard for me to ignore the some of the some of the nitpicks i have which are minor you know yeah yeah of course of course so um i guess for the sake of brevity uh i don't know how long this has been going on since i haven't i don't see like a timer on my screen or anything but uh um, obviously more than 40 minutes since it yeah gave you more time <laughs> yeah so we have a ballpark so yeah so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this whole thing up thank you guys so much for watching and then thank you guys aj and alex for being a part of this uh and listening to me ramble and like listen to all of us just ramble about this movie for however long this is you're welcome <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> thanks for having me pleasure to be here so yeah guys if you haven't seen this movie it's on hulu uh so please go watch do yourself a favor but uh i probably stay away from 28 weeks later the sequel with susan I really want to see that though. <laughs> Susan Sarandon or whatever, or uh, uh, Sandra Bullock, that's her name. Yeah, I would not recommend that. I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, it's not great. And I just wouldn't waste your time on it. Just watch this one instead. But uh, yeah, guys, that is it. So we'll see you guys on the next Inner Circle. Hopefully that'll be next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.